we're continuing our series on understanding binary in C Sharp with lesson number three. In this video, we're going to store and display binary values in C Sharp in 10 minutes or less. So back to our kind of scratch pad application here, we've got a, a problem and that is we wanna store a number like, oh, let's just go with a 1001. Okay, so that's uh, nine in, you know, in base 10, this is um, 1001 in base two or in binary. How do you store that in C-sharp? Well, the answer is in an integer. Okay, so binary value, we call, give it a name, and we're gonna put that number in, but we can't say 1001 because that's going to be 1001 and that's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for base 10, which is what C Sharp is going to assume because that's what we typically work with is base 10. So instead what we do is we say zero B in front. And that tells the, the, uh, the system, it tells C Sharp that, hey, this is a binary number. Now, notice I just said one zero zero one, I could put three, four leading zeros in front of this, that would be totally fine, okay? So we don't have to do that though. We can just put 1001. It's up to you how you want to format these things. But that's how we store a binary value in C Sharp. We put it in an integer. Now, you can also put in an unsigned integer, a uint, and that would be if you want to not have the, the positive or negative sign associated with this number. That's a whole nother topic. But we've got the values stored, but now let's say console write line, um, the binary value is, and then let's put binary value, right? And if we run this, we're going to see that again, C sharp is thinking in base 10. And so it says, well, that's nine. You're like, no, 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 that's one zero zero one. I wanna see the binary version of that, not a problem. So we'll come back here and say the binary value is this, uh, base 10. But let's come down here and write it again and say the binary value is, and we'll leave it empty for now and put base two. So how do we export this value into something that's readable as binary? Well, what we do is I'm gonna put this in a, a string variable just um, because it's gonna be easier to see but we could put it right in line if you want to, and I will in future videos, but for now we're just gonna put the um, string representation or just put, yeah, string re representation equals, and we're gonna say convert to string. We're gonna pass in our binary value and we're gonna say two. And what that does is that we pass in the value, integer of the value, and then the base. So two base two, eight, 10, or 16. So that would be uh, binary, oct, decimal, or hex. So we're converting this to base uh, two or binary. Now I could leave this as is, and then just put the string representation here. And if we run this, we're gonna see that it says one zero zero one. Cool, that's what we're looking for. Now, that might not be exactly what we're looking for though, because the fact that you're, you're probably thinking, hey, wait a minute, um, what if I wanted to see it as it, you know, quote unquote really is? What if I wanna see um, a byte or, you know, eight uh, values? And so I wanna see something like this with the leading zeros. Well, what we have to do is at the end of this convert to string, we say pad left, as an on the left side, and say so you wanna have eight total characters and we're gonna put a, um, a string care, I'm sorry, a, um, a char of zero for every space that's missing. So in our case, let's can take this back off. Uh, in our case, we have four values that would naturally show up because we have, it starts with that, that first one from, from left to right. Um, so we have more we want to put on the left. How many more? Four. We want a total of eight characters. And it says, okay, what's, what's the character you put in front? Well, we're going to put a zero in front. And they may say, well, why is it in single quotes? Because it's a char. 
Um, it's not a string, it's a char, and it's putting this char in front of this, this value four times. Again, this will output to a string. That's why we're not putting a the, the, the number zero. It's not the number zero, it's the char zero. We're outputting a string, which is a series of chars. Okay, so now we run this again, and we see we had that, you know, formatted decimal value that is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And that's our uh, representation of, in this case, what we a byte, which is eight bits. So that may be the format we're looking for, for our, um, our binary value. And coming up, yes, we're going to have to have those leading numbers. So with that, we have our way of storing binary values in integers or um, the other, you know, whole number types. So we can also store in, in uint or long, etc. cetera. Um, and we convert that in order to see it visually as a binary again by saying convert to string, the value, and then base two. And then if you want to do padding, we can do that as well. Now notice that we don't have to put it in then as this uh, binary format if we have a number, like if you have a, a base 10 number. So we could, let's put the number uh, 15, um, let's put uh, 12. 15 is a little different because of, of where it lands, but let's do 12. Um, and that's just, that is a 32-bit signed integer. It's a base 10. We did not say 0B, so that's base 10. 10. Well, how's it going to look when we print it out? Well, it's going to show us, yes, that's 12, because we put 12 in, but then there is the representation of what that might look like or would look like in binary. So you don't have to put it in as binary in order to get the binary value out, but if you already have a binary value like this, then we can put it into an integer, not a problem, we just put the 0B in front. That's important. But then we will um, print that back out using this conversion method. Okay, so that's how to store binary values just as integer types or similar and how to get them back out visually to represent that, that binary, which would be to um, convert to string base two. And then if you want to optionally pad the left side, however many characters you want. Now, it's going to come up in the future. So I want to point this out right now. We're storing this value in this type, which is an int type. Now, I don't know if you've read this before, or thought about this before, but read what it says the int is. It's a read-only struct system.int32. Represents a 32-bit signed integer. So how many bits can it store? 32. So technically, what we've got here is this. If we run this, this is technically what's being stored in the memory register. We have this value, which is why when we're talking about sizes of things, well, we work with 32-bit because it's a, it's a pretty easy one to work with. It pretty much covers all of our needs, but we don't want to go larger than that because a 64-bit version would be twice as long twice as much stored in memory. So that's when we talk about, you know, making sure the type is the correct type or a small enough type that we don't use too much space. That's what we're talking about is the fact that 32 bits is very, very large. So I just want to point that out that that's technically how it's being stored in C sharp. When we use an integer, an integer is actually int 32. Okay, so that's how to store it. That's how to get it back out.